Hello and welcome to Simon Says Artwork. This is the new studio space that I'm going to be working in and today I'm going to be talking about hatching. This was a suggestion by one of the comments on my videos. I think it was by Dale. I'll have to double check that but I'm pretty sure that's who it was. So what I'm going to do is go through some of the hatching that I've done throughout the years and highlight some of the things that I use it for and just discuss where it works and where it doesn't show you a couple of videos but it'll be a bit of a slideshow as well so all right let's get started well starting off with this very loose hatching I'm going to start showing you some images that I did over the years when I was getting used to drawing lines fairly close together and trying to make it um, create a sort of texture and a balance on the image. Now, as you can see there, I've layered up some of the hatching to make it create a darker tone. And this shows you some of the abstract experiments that I tried and people would quite enjoy those. And this one here is where I've done part of a drawing of a, of a figure and then I for the background wanted to use some just pattern like marks really so the idea is instead of using black which is the last thing that you can do unless you're going to start making it mixed media and you bring a paint pen on top so you can see on the uh, clothing I started to introduce black and that's as far as that clothing will go in those areas but for the background I, I wanted the figure to stand off a bit so I create um, what's called a mid-tone which is not shadow and not light it's the in-between and hatching is a great way of doing that and then going back on top of hatching again makes it go darker in certain areas and I'm trying to make certain shapes inside and it was just part of an experiment this one I did on a hand towel. I was at a comic book convention and I really like the colour of the hand towel. That's closer to the colour that it actually was, like a mid blue. And I started hatching away and just creating this sci fi looking face and form. And I really quite like it. That's where hatching can really just create these shapes and these forms out of nothing. But now I'm going to discuss another aspect of what hatching can do it's something which I practice quite a lot and that is texture so for this drawing the idea was just to do these hatching lines in between each other intersecting and there was no forethought with the final shape I just let it lead me which may sound strange, but I promise you, if you just focus on doing lines and marks and then you look at their relation to the other lines, they start to just create this form out of nothing. And then you have this strange knotted looking textured form. Now, I don't know if it looks like wood or if it looks like mold or if it looks like uh, rope. I'm not too sure. I mean, to me, it looks more wood like, but it's not quite wood. So it's strange to say exactly what it is but I certainly do like the effect. And I think that practicing hatching is a great way of finding texture in something where you would otherwise have to just draw an outline. And you'll notice with these drawings, there is no outline. Now there, I tried to cut it into it because I quite like how it looks as a background shape. Some of the hatching's really scratchy and messy, as you can see. So I tried to make it neater than these, but even when it's scratchy and messy, that's at the top right hand corner. And you can see that if you introduce a clean form, the messiness is almost um, the abstraction where it's pushing out some kind of birthed form, faces and figures and ideas of actual personalities. And that's where hatching becomes um, something where you can try to find different ways of shaping faces and marks and landscapes this is one where i'd used a ruler to make a certain area um, clean 
done a sort of circle in the center and then just hashed around and then back on top. This was a tool that I was given as a gift and it's a dip pen made out of wood and that's the drawing that I did with it and it's all hatching and I really like things like that. I think it's quite an interesting shape. These are texture pages here. So I did it like a comic book panels and I wanted to see what would come out of it. And out of this one, it seems to be vines and reeds and things like that. So on the next one, it started to look like a mountain range. And then I thought I'd go into a closer up cropped shot and it starts to become more abstract and people see things inside of it. And I really just let them communicate what they're seeing more than dictating what I'm actually drawing. Because in truth, I had no final decision about what it was that I had made. It was just shapes and textures. So you can see there these two pages of um, hatch marks that create this landscape-like forms and textures and areas, just different vistas of shadow and mid-tone. Here it's more rounded forms. And then I tried to make them almost look mutant-like. And, and then again, you can make landscapes, you can make parts which are left out so that they are almost platforms there within this textured ground and doing different lines and marks. And then if you put on more weight in certain areas or if you go back over certain areas, they become darker and start to suggest certain forms. If you leave gaps in between, it starts to create a shape, as you can see on the, uh, the lower right hand side. And then I started to draw smoke coming out of it because it looked like some kind of a pod. And this is more guided hatching. At first it was just random and I'd leave out certain bits and do others. But then it started to become something where I could make decisions and push around certain shapes and forms and create things. So I really recommend trying some of this um, type of techniques and exercises. Because you can see there it's quite random. It's not anything specific. And I could have gone in and finished it by using shadow to heighten certain areas and make certain parts darker and completely black but I quite like the mid-tone it all seems to be on the same plane now I'm going to go into something a bit more figurative now this is where I do hatch in to create forms for life drawing and this was a specific concept that I had to do several figure models on the uh, same surface and these poses would go from the top to the bottom suggesting either a progression or a mood board and I really liked how it ended up some better than others the one in the center is probably my favorite but that was all hatching now this is back when I used to do pencil drawings before I would ink in and here you can see by using a really fine nib you can actually get such a light tone that it doesn't even look like hatching anymore. It looks like you've used a grayscale brush. And that's what I did to indicate either makeup or the shadow in the eye sockets. And you can see there it's so light and so close together that it just becomes a gray. And then when you lose a thicker nib like I did on the outlines or on the eyebrows, it looks more like hatching. But it's great practice. Once you've done it over and over and over and over again and you really take your time and spend effort doing it, don't be too hard on yourself if you're not great at being tidy with it at first. But then you can do more experimental things like a wisp of smoke and start to create shapes and do contour hatching. You can see partly on the beard a bit of contoured hatching just to suggest the curvature of the jaw. But otherwise on clothes it's almost quite nice to flatten all the clothing and then different directional hatching is quite interesting as well and you can make it a patchwork where it becomes something with different thickness nibs suggests a darker shadow or a more dramatic lighting and then cross hatching is just when you go back over the line so that it's not one direction it's two and that can either suggest a knitted weave or a darker surface and just different ideas 
Okay, so that's the video done. I hope you found that entertaining and somewhat informative. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Leave a like on the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell. And I will see you in the next video.